Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? All right. I got I got the gas tank himself. The shirts just came out through Barbarian Apparel. <laughs> Gary, Gary Traub. The Oregon State transfer from Cincinnati, Ohio. Gary, how you doing today? Doing good. Doing good. Just got back from uh, visiting my buddy at Pitt. So, been on the road all day. But, yeah, just got back. So, Okay, so you're in Ohio right now. Yeah. Okay. How long were you out? Because I saw you on my way down to vacation in July, uh, mid-July, early mid-July. You had not been out to Corvallis yet to live. How long were you yeah. out there, and how long did you come back? Uh, I think I was out there. I left shortly after uh, I saw you, so I think I was out there like a little over a month or something like that. And then um, I was going to stay and uh, and just roll right into the season. But my dad just had back surgery, so you know he was pushing for me to come home, and you know he needed some help around the house, so. Uh, I'm only back. I'm only back for a week, though. So just a little short trip back, and then I'm back and getting ready for the season. They start a lot later than than Ohio State, don't they? Yeah, yeah. That was de- it. Was definitely a little weird. Like I'm still. Um, I don't get to schedule my classes until September 15th. So um, it's kind of nerve wracking. I want to like have that all fi- figured out. So I'm. I'm uh, yeah, we don't start school till September 20th, though, and I think. Most schools are already back, you know. I know Pitt's starting now and, like, Ohio State's starting now. So, there's already some people that are um, getting started with classes and all that. So, so but you guys don't go back until September 20th. And they don't use, – you schedule. So, athletes must be able to schedule five days beforehand. Because I know it, where, at Kent State where I went and probably Ohio State where you were previous to this, athletes were the first ones that got to, to schedule. Is that true in uh, Oregon as well? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think it's a little different um, with me being like a transfer and kind of the the, um, the path that I'm doing. Yeah, uh, your grad school, right? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm just I'm really just doing a, adding a certificate, so I didn't go into. I got it. I'm doing the yeah, same thing right now. It. I'm actually literally yeah. I'm literally adding a certificate, a career based intervention uh, endorsement, actually. To I'm doing grad school at Kent State right now, and I'm doing the same thing that you're talking about. I'm not going to actually come out with a degree. I already have a master's degree, but I'll have an endorsement under my teaching license. What is your uh, undergrad in, by the way? Uh, I did human family development science. Just want to be like a, a counselor or, you know, help people in that way. What's the endorsement license that you're going to come out of Oregon, out of Oregon State with? Um, I have a real, I mean, since uh, I'm not scheduled until the 15th, it kind of gave me some more time to think about kind of what the the options were and the choices I want to. So I'm going to talk to my academic counselor a little bit more and, and kind of narrow it down, but I'm not exactly sure yet. So I got some time though. Okay. You got time. That's good. That's, you know, Hey, yeah. time's on your side. That's good. And it's early, you know, it's early September, you know, I mean, just August, man, August, through, it really flew by. You were out training for all of August then. Yeah. So what was it like to get out to Oregon, to the Willamette Valley and the Corvallis? First off, it ain't Columbus and it ain't Cincinnati. Let's just put it that way, <laughs> right? No, it is no. It is a different deal. It's a different beast out there. You got the coastal. You guys are right at the foothills of the coastal range. And then there's this big valley. And then that leads up into the Cascade Mountains, right? It, it yeah. is, it's something else, man. What, what did you think and what was it like to get out to Oregon and, and kind of see what, what it was like in Corvallis and the Willamette Valley? Uh, I mean, just being out there for this past month, it's been – it's been awesome. We're doing like mountain runs, you know, we're, we're getting up and, and you get, you get to see these like incredible views while you're running. And, you know, obviously when you're running up these huge hills, it's no fun, but when you get to the top, you kind of, you're looking around and it's like beautiful trees everywhere. The scenery, I mean, the scenery is awesome. And uh, when I first got there, actually, I was, I was a little nervous because uh, my flight got delayed. So I didn't get in, into town until like, one in the morning and when I got to my place my roommate wasn't even there so so like I, I'm like I'm hoping I'm at the right house in this place but um waking up in the in the morning and like you can bike everywhere so I just got a bike out there so 
you see me, everyone's laughing at me because I'm on like this little bike and I'm like obviously You're a big dude. So. You're yeah. a big dude on a little tiny bike. <laughs> yeah, so I'm riding around this little bike and, uh, you know, riding it to practice. I live pretty close and then um, going, riding to the runs on a bike and stuff like that. But it, it's uh, it's awesome. And, and like you're saying, it's it's a lot different than Columbus. You're not like in the city. It's basically like farm all around, mountains all around. And uh, then you have campus, and uh, which is a lot smaller. But I like it. It, it feels uh, – it's nice and homey. So my nephew coached out there. Ian Miller coached out there for four years, and now he's at Appalachian State. But uh, we ha- I, I took him to camp out there as a, as a high schooler. And uh, one of the club coaches – I don't know if he's still involved with you guys, but his name is Jason Lara. He's an alumni there. And yeah, yeah. Jason Lara beat Ian within an inch of his life. <laughs> he beat me up so bad. I like felt bad kind of because we're, you know, we would, we'd hike, we'd climb, we'd swim, we'd do all this stuff. And then we would go to, uh, <laughs> we'd go to camp and Laura would just, Laura just beat him savagely, which ended up helping him out. Right. But at the end of the day, yeah. Like, I think Laura's, is Laura still out there? Yeah. He, um, I was gonna say, I just met him. Uh, I met him at a practice and, uh, you know, like coming in, like I was talking to like the Willits brothers and stuff and they're like, Oh man, you know, like that he he does like the he works at Matt Sense or whatever. He has that club at Matt Sense, I think. Okay. And uh yeah, but he they were like, Oh dude, Laura's got some good stuff and he's tough as hell, like you'll meet him. Yeah. And uh, he came into the room and I mean, he is like the fastest person I've ever seen in my life. Like some of the stuff he's hidden in, like just drill, and I'm like, this guy is so fast. I was like, I and I was like making a joke. I was like, dude, I gotta get that fast, you know, if I'm gonna start taking people down. But he's just like just darts everything is quick what's crazy out there gary and you're gonna find out is everything's so far apart you're really <laughs> gonna find that out because you gotta fly to everything unless it's a home duel which you guys might have four or five of even your conference schedule is all a flight everything's a, it's, it's it's a it's an hour and a half up to portland and then it's a flight yeah and i've been going out there since 2003 my best friend lived he actually literally just moved out of portland a couple months ago and he moved out to Sandy, Oregon, which is East. It's East of the airport and East of Portland. So he moved out to Sandy, which is closer to uh, the government. I think it's called government camp on your way up to like Timberline Lodge and, and Mount Hood. So it, it's an amazing place. Have you been to the Columbia River Gorge yet? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. I think the, um, you know, Coach, P- Coach Pendleton has been, been working us hard, which I, which I love. So, uh, we haven't had too many off days, but uh, on the days we get off, I usually um, – we've been going, like, cliff jumping and stuff at, like, Detroit Lake, and then um, we floated the uh, Willamette River, and we caught a bunch of uh, – we caught a bunch of, like, uh, bass and, and uh, some little trout and stuff. So – and uh, some squawfish, which apparently are not the same as trout, I'm learning. So – Okay, you're learning. <laughs> I like that. You're learning. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> So I could set you up with a guy who does whitewater rafting. My best friend, the guy, he's, he works for Portland General Electric. He's one of their head of uh, electrical engineers. I could set you If you're interested in dying on a rafting trip, uh, <laughs> I can set you up with him. But then Coach Pendleton might kill me. It would be like a horrible <laughs> chain of events for me and you and your family. So we'll probably just hold off on that. But he lives out there in Sandy. And he has, I want to say the Clackamas River is in his backyard. Oh, okay. Actually, okay. look, I, I don't know if it's the Clackamas. He told me what it was, and it's a bunch of class fours, like in his oh, backyard, wow. within his ho- within like two miles of his house. He said there's a bunch of class four rapids, class fives, like that. Pretty wild. Yeah, and he's nuts, and he runs them all alone with no safety. He's out of his mind. What you're gonna find out about that place, the Pacific Northwest, the people are different. Oh yeah, the I'm people really- are different, man. Yeah. It's, the people are different. It's a different <laughs> place. I got married out there. So, you know, I, I've been going out there since 2003 and Oregon's an awesome, it's a special place to me. I love being there and, and like you're, you're finding out it, it's a cool place. Have you been to the coast and Cannon Beach and all that Nesquin or any of that stuff? Yeah. Yeah. We went to, um, we went to Newport and then we ended up having to drive up to Devil's Punch Bowl because uh, we, we did like a little beach workout. Uh, nice. So like Pendleton put us through, you know, he's like, he's like, Hey, we're going to have a beach day. Um, Beach day Friday, you guys, it'll be a nice day. You guys will we'll grill out. So I'm coming to the beach. I got my swim trunks on. I'm like, oh, you know, it's going to be 
you know, I've, I've never been on the West Coast beaches, so I didn't know the water was freezing cold, one. And then uh, – <laughs> You need a wetsuit, dude. Yeah, they're like, no, you can't – I'm seeing everybody getting a wetsuit and a surfboard. I'm like, what? Like, I'm the wearing shorts. I'm ready to go. But uh, we get to this beach, and um, he has us doing this workout. And as soon as he said the name of it, uh, my buddy up there now, Crooks, he was saying, Corey Crooks, he was like, dude, this is going to be the hardest workout we ever do. So we're doing uh, – they call it like the Kotchka or whatever, and it's like a bunch of body weight stuff. And uh, Pendleton's a really big fan of it. So we did that on the beach, and I'm just like – it was probably like a 30, 45-minute workout. And after everyone was so beat, we all just ran into the water, just dunked ourselves, just get a little little cold tub action. Shock, but, dude. It shocks yeah. you, though, because that water <laughs> sub-50 degree a lot of the time. Oh, yeah. And it, it smashes you. The Pacific Ocean's really cold. Especially it's when you get anywhere, down. anywhere even like uh, north of Los Angeles, in my experience, is it's freezing cold. Yeah, like freezing I'll, cold. Like I've done the whole Oregon coast a bunch of times on 101 and Dawdle. There's a ton of really good state parks on the Highway 101, which you guys are on. You were like uh, you were the only place you can go west of the 101, and there's an amazing uh, amount of state parks that are on the Highway 101, which is the coastal highway, Pacific Coastal Highway. Uh, in Oregon. And it's incredible, Gary. Like it, you, you, you know, you got to see it, but have you done yeah. Pacific city? Have you gone to, I think it's Lincoln city, Pacific city. Uh, then there's like Astoria, which is the furthest point North in Oregon. I mean, it's amazing. Then there's Florence there's sand dunes. There's just a lot going on and it's a massive state. Is the other yeah. thing about it where you guys are is right at the edge of where it's rainforest basically. Uh, where it was rainforest, where, you know, it's, you know, things are changing, right? Yeah. A lot of fires out there, right? Are there fires right now? Yeah, I think my first week there, there was a couple fires. I'm like, I was like, why is it so cloudy? They're like, dude, that's smoke, man. <laughs> They're like, oh, yeah. Fire. yeah. All, so every like, summer. Like, uh, that's, a, that's a thing, I guess. People walk outside and goes, oh, it looks, it's smoky today. There must be a fire. So I'm like, it's, <laughs> so. That's yeah, what there, there was a couple is. fires there when I got yeah. there. It's how it is, and they have, you know, and it's gotten worse and worse as it's gotten drier and drier. But what's wild where you are, you go east of where you are, and it becomes, like, arid. It becomes arid. And then when you get um, to a certain point, I think it's, like, the Dalles on the Columbia River Gorge, it just turns, like, like literally. You're driving, you go around a bend, and it goes from Pacific Northwest, temperate rainforest, basically, to dry, arid, like, almost uh, – I can't even think of what, what it is. It's just like that gorge gets dry real quick. And then, you know, when you look at Eastern Washington and central Washington, that's real dry as well. So it's, it's, a, it is, it's just so different than the Midwest. And, you know, like you said, you, or like I said, you're going to, you're going to find that out with the travel, you know, think about it, Arizona state, you're going to have an hour and a half drive. You're going to have, you know, probably yeah. like an hour and 45 minute, two hour flight, whatever it is to Phoenix. And then, you know, you're going to be in Tempe probably there's direct flights so you're not gonna have to connect but a lot of these other places that you go you're gonna have to connect through chicago right yeah you have to connect through places and i haven't seen your guys' schedule yet but um it, it's gonna be obviously a very different schedule from a big 10 schedule so let's let's talk about that let's talk about the transition from big 10 where you were sixth in the big 10 and you qualified for the ncs and the tournament got canceled due to covid right that you you really that's when the whole well that's when this this whole thing come about the, the the phenomenon of the the state finalist from Ohio from Cincinnati Sycamore High School Gary Traub came to be Gas Tank Gary right talk yeah. to me about the origin origins of the name Gas Tank Gary and how we got to Barbarian Apparel making an <laughs> unbelievable likeness to you it feels like I'm looking right at look you at when I look down but <laughs> talk to me about the origins of Gas Tank Gary Gary. Yeah, um, I think kind of going up through high school, you know, that my dad's big thing was just push people. Like, if you're not gonna, if you're not gonna beat them with with technique or strength or something, he's like, you got to wear them out. So that was kind of my my thing. And, and you know, you nobody probably knew that about me unless you're from you know the Cincinnati area. I wasn't going out other places and and doing stuff. So when I got to college, it was kind of the same mindset. You know, I'm wrestling guys that are on paper that are on paper they're supposed to be better than me. So you know, you got and that's kind of why I wanted to go to Ohio State in the first place is I'm going to wrestle, you know, the best guys, and I'm going to see, you know, the best kids that are going to go there, and, and it'll give me a chance to get better. So when I finally got into the lineup, um, 
and I won that match late against Stanford. That was kind of the big one because you have this just huge guy coming out. And, you know, I'm like a little short, pudgy guy a little bit. You know, whenever I get big, my it all goes to my belly. So this guy's like <laughs> chiseled out with arms. I mean, I don't have the biggest arms, you know. And uh, and I ended up just wearing them down and, and taking them down with the last 30 seconds. And, and you could tell, like, um, I, in my mind, I'm always thinking, okay, this guy has one more big push. You know, like the, once I took the Stanford guy down, it's like he's got one more big push in him. And when big push never came, I was like, I must have just – absolutely wore him down and I was like that was easy I'd rather not have to deal with that last push than just you know wear him down uh the six minutes before so um that's how it all kind of started and some some I wish I could uh remember who it was but somebody said on Twitter like oh let's call him like gas tank Gary because he never runs out of gas and he's always going and kind of from there like Ohio State took it and ran with it and then you know Flow Wrestling started saying it and so it kind of just escalated from there what did it feel like to finally have all your hard work and, you know, you're this guy that is an un unassuming guy. You don't look like the picture of fitness to a lot of people, right? You, you yeah. said it, not me. Yeah. <laughs> right. You, you look like this like guy, who, you know, a little pudgy guy doesn't look like he's got a whole lot. What did it, what would it, what was that like, man? You were like the biggest thing going. You were like trending in college wrestling for all, every weekend you guys would wrestle because the big tens Fridays and Sundays, I think that's how they do. Yeah. That, right. And then, yeah. Being on the Big Ten Network is, come on, man. People don't go to the Big Ten to not be on the Big Ten Network, right? Yeah. Like, I remember, like, <laughs> even as, as close as, like, six or seven years ago, people were like, hey, man, you can't film our matches. I'm like, why not? And they're like, we don't want people seeing us. I was like, oh, you think all the dudes that go to the Big Ten go to the Big Ten to not be on the Big Ten Network and not be scouted? Yeah. Like, so that's out the window now. Everybody wants to be seen. You know that everybody wants to be seen. Everybody wants their yeah. matches televised or on the internet or streamed or whatever. But I fought that for a long time. I like, cause that's what I did. Right. I would go out and I would film wrestling, but people fought that. So you're this walk on who doesn't look like a Greek God, right? <laughs> Quite the opposite. And you go out and you wear Was it Traxler? Is that who it was from? I'm just taking a guess from Stanford. Um, no, no, it was, it was, um, Dang, I'm blanking on his name, but it uh I can't think of that's the last blank, name I can think of. Yeah. It wasn't Traxler though. Okay. But he was their heavyweight though at some point, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Hit, okay. Can't think of it. We'll think it'll come around to us. But anyhow, we'll find it. <laughs> you wear him down. And then I remember the Navels one was the big one for me because it was at Penn State. Yeah. That one was crazy. Cause you kind of put it on him. Yeah, that was kind of the one where um I mean, that was probably my, my big signature win, obviously. And, like, just going into that match the whole week leading up to it, I, in my head I was thinking, we're going to win this duel and it's going to come down to my match. So, you know, I was like, in my head, that was what I was training for. I was training to be the last match of the night and be the one that sealed it and finally got us over that hump. And, um, you know, when the duel didn't end up, you know, Obviously, it didn't end up going the way that I thought it was in my head or we thought it was going to go as a team. Uh, it kind of – it didn't change things for me, really, because I was like, I still have to go out and win this match and just, you know, get to the next level, get a good seat at Big Tens, get a good seat at Nationals. And um, I, there was like a turning point in the match, and I was talking to Coach Ryan about it, like, right after, where we went out of bounds and um, – and he hit his knee or scraped his knee or something. And he started bleeding and had to get taped up. And I was like, Coach Ryan, he's, he's leaning on me with that arm. I, I, know, I, I know I have my shot, my, my little pass-by shot that I, that I always hit. And he's like, he's like, he's like, just, he's like, just hit it. Just freaking hit it then. You know, is that like, you're, you're telling me that it's there. Now go hit it. So when we came back out to the mat, there was like, you know, 30 seconds or whatever. And I ended up hitting it and, and – and the whole match, it's it's funny because, like, um, if you look in the background, you see my dad just going like this. And the whole time he's, he's screaming, put him in the air, put him in the air. So as soon as I got it, I was like, I'm just going to lift him as hard as I can and just uh, just see if I can pick him up. And then I ended up, you know, obviously picking him up and, and taking him down. So it, it was funny talking to my dad about that. He's like, did you hear me screaming? He's like, I threw out my shoulder just pumping my arm so much in the stands. So. That's it's probably one of my favorite matches to go back to, and and just being in um in that environment in front of 
all those people, it, it's uh, it was nuts. That was at Bryce Jordan, wasn't it? Yeah, that, yeah. that wasn't at like Rack Hall. That was at Bryce Jordan. Yeah, that was the big one. Yeah, it was Dude, like 16, that's crazy. 17, I remember you lifting him, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Because we were just sitting here at home, and I was <laughs> going nuts. And my wife was like, "I like this guy. I like this guy a lot." And I know Shane Sparks. I think he was a big gas tank. Guy. Yeah, yeah, I loved it. I loved it. And that guy's like that enthusiasm. He always brings the heat, right? You know? Yeah, I would always give Shane a, a couple of mad returns. He's big on mad returns. So oh, my God. It. But hold on. Hold on. Even as, like, a grown man, right, I can tell you something like, if you look at these MMA guys, how we're able to pick people up and put them down and land on them and wear on them, that's why the college wrestlers, you know, that on top of we do, you guys, you're going to do 20 weigh-ins this year. You're going to do 20 weigh-ins in this year, Gary. I understand you're not cutting to 285, and it's easy for you. But 20 weigh-ins for, you know, j- just look at the Willits brothers. That wears on you, man. That yeah. wears on you. That's not easy. It's hard. And that's why I think that we're, fo- we're so physical, right? It's such a physical season. There's nothing like a D1 season, right? Yeah. There's, there's nothing. There's nothing yeah. comparing to it. And then the mat returns and, and riding someone on the riding point, I think, is another big part because we're pretty good at taking people down and controlling them when it comes to the MMA. But when you lifted that guy up, man, I, I was like, yeah, and everybody, you know, and I, I love that you <laughs> threw his shoulder out. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Oh, my God. They, they were, I was, um, I was going to say, Jaggers and uh, Travell made fun of me because after the match, I go like this, you know, I'm doing the OH. And they're like, child, you're not at the Cavelli Center. They're like, no one's giving you an I.O. back. You know that, right? Like, there's no one here that is good. That's good. He's like, you got to save that for home. So. Uh, what, what, yeah, but, like, what an awesome environment. You've been in two of the most electric environments, you know, just Ohio State at the Cavelli, and then, obviously, Bryce Jordan. And it, it, the, the Bryce Jordan duels are the – it's not every year that they have a Bryce Jordan duel. Yeah. Uh, normally it's at rec hall and that's i don't know if you've wrestled in the duel there i don't think you have have you i don't think so no so you know rec hall is different and they it's like a large senior citizen population too <laughs> they know they got like real old fans and a lot of their season ticket holders are, are people 50 60 and older i'm not that's not like oh zab you're, you're ripping <laughs> penn state no they have like an old it's like like a running joke they have an older fan base but i don't know if you know anything about a lot of old people a lot of them have money <laughs> They have money and they can they can go and be ravenous fans and they're they're educated fans. So yeah, they got a real aged population at Penn State, but man, they got great fans. They got, obviously got the whole spectrum, right? As far as age, but they got older fans, man. It's great. Yeah. But that where you were is twice the size of Rec Hall. Over twice the size. So it's wild. But anyhow, Gary, let's talk about Tate Orndorf comes in, okay. He comes in and and you guys have wrestle offs, right? Yeah. Did, did you guys wrestle in the Michigan State Open or the Storm Open? Was there anything? Because you guys didn't really have any of that last year. There was no yeah. open tournaments. Or did you guys ever wrestle in any of that other stuff? I guess in years previous is what I'm asking. Uh no I, no that's the first time I uh I ever wrestled him when he came in during the summer and. Uh, so no, we we hadn't wrestled like a live match really anywhere besides you know practice and and uh, leading up to the wrestle off and everything. So, so he beat you in the wrestle off. He's back again this year. At what point were you like, okay, I've had a great run here, but I think there's other opportunities for me. This it's a wild time in all of our lives right now. You got name, image, likeness, dude. If anybody's got a better nickname and image and likeness it's gas tank gary that the big 10 network <laughs> and you know and the, your hard work was recognized so there was just this situation right you get beat out i got beat out as a fifth year senior so i know i know where you're coming from right it's tough it's tough right yeah but there's opportunities there there's opportunities there and you're a top 20 guy you're a top 20 heavyweight i think i just saw in the rankings internet link rankings they had you ranked because they did the top 33 what they have you 19th maybe you probably don't. Oh, no, I didn't, I didn't even see it. You don't even look at rankings, so you, it wouldn't even matter yeah. to you. But, but the point <laughs> don't is, matter. Yeah, it don't matter right now. Your top twenty guy, they give you an extra year with COVID. You start exploring, right? You start exploring. How did it? How did Oregon State come to be the thing? I know that I I, I hit Jim Anderson up at Kent State. I was like, get this guy. 
Yeah, I talked to Coach Agency a lot, yeah. Yeah, so I was like, get this guy. Obviously, they didn't get you. What was what was the process like in transferring and, and, and going two two day drive away? What was that like all the way yeah. to the West Coast? Um, you know, when I first was thinking about getting into the portal, you know, it was it was kind of just like a, a frustrating uh, frustrating process at first, just because I was going to transfer the year before and uh, before last year. And, you know, Coach Ryan and uh, the staff kind of convinced me to stay, you know, and I loved Ohio State. I, you, know, you have five years of buddies there and, uh, you know, you make all these connections and stuff. Um, so I decided to stay and kind of when I, kind of the moment I lost a wrestle off and um, I ended up tweaking my ankle a little bit afterwards. And it, like, I kind of just saw all these things happening in, in my head, like having a little bit of time off from the ankle injury. I was like, I just want to go somewhere else and do – you know, just be the guy. So um, when I first started the process, it was it was kind of slow at first. And I was like, man, you know, I was getting hit up by um, – you know, I think Gardner-Webb was the first school to hit me up. And I was like, okay, you know, we're getting started. And then it wasn't until, like, you know, four days later and I'm sweating. I'm like, okay, Gardner-Webb hit me up. Like, I do this – I hope everyone knows that I'm in the portal, you know, like, because um, – before I even got into the portal, I was talking to um, talking to a coach, and he was like, oh, you know, you'll probably get hit up by some small schools, you know, like, um, you know, some smaller schools, you know, so you might go, like, D2. And so in my head, I'm thinking, okay, like, am I going to go wrestle D2 or, you know? And then eventually, you know, some of the bigger schools started reaching out, like West Virginia, Iowa State. Um, Oregon State wasn't actually until later when um, – I think they were talking to Colin Moore about, um, you know, possibly going out there or something like that. And Colin gave uh, one of the coaches my numbers and said, like, hey, you know, you put in a good word for me. And uh, eventually Mike Casoy reached out and um, started talking to me. And then, you know, I started talking to Coach Engel and, and Coach Pendleton and stuff like that. But it, were, it was really out of nowhere. I was um, I was kind of – when I first got in, I was kind of um, – Pitt was my – my first choice just because, you know, it's close to home. Uh, it's like four hour drive. And then, you know, obviously Luke Fletcher is there. My buddy, Elijah Cleary, he ended up going there. So I had um, all these connections at Pitt, you know, we, you know, me and Eli's plan was, Hey, let's go to Pitt and win an ACC title. Like, that's what we're going to do. And um, when, when Oregon State reached out, I was like, man, this, am I going to be okay if I go so far away from home? Because, you know, I've lived in Ohio my whole life. Ohio State's an hour and a half from my house, if that. And um, so I was like, how, how am I going to do if I, if I go across the country and I'm away from my dad, my brother, all my friends, you know, my whole family? And it, that was kind of the hardest thing to get over because, you know, when, when they sent me pictures of the school and the campus, you know, I, I loved it. I was like, this is going to be awesome. and uh, when I got out there and, and met some of the team, they were like, they're all so close. They all were into like kind of the same stuff that I'm into, like outdoor stuff, fishing, hiking, all that stuff. And there's more opportunities to do that out there, which, you know, Ohio, you, you, you're lake fishing, you know, you're catching catfish and bass out there. You're catching salmon and trout and all this other stuff. So that, that was a, a pretty cool draw, but um, just getting to talk with, with coach Engel, he, uh, he's one of the nicest guys I've ever met. He, uh, really, he really sold me on going out there and, uh, just really helping me out with, with everything I needed to do in order to make that happen and, and making the transition over there as easy as possible. Um, so yeah, I mean, once I kind of narrowed it down to Pitt and Oregon state, it was, uh, it was hard to, you know, tell Pletcher and, and that coaching staff at Pitt that I wasn't going to come, but I, th I think it was the right choice. Okay, so you, you just mentioned Pletcher, you said Colin Moore, you've mentioned Jaggers, you've mentioned Coach Ryan, Terval. I mean, though, the, Ohio State's a special place. There's no question yeah. about it, right? Everybody knows that it's a special place. Ohio State is Ohio State. It's just – it's the flagship institution which, in Ohio, which has 11 million people. You know, we're top ten in population. we got a ton of public and private universities, but the flagship is Ohio State. And what they've done since, you know, 
the night, you know, the forever in football, right? 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, you know, for over 100 years now, they've been, you know, a national power in football. And, and that really drives the budget of a lot of the athletics there, right? Yeah. Everybody knows football is king in Ohio State. It's not up for, yeah. Them, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it's what, it's what runs everything, right? And you're there and there's, they've got this ravenous, blindly loyal alumni base that is just going to game day there is insane, right? Is there anything like a Saturday game day in Columbus, Ohio? I think not, right? I mean, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's a carnival atmosphere, right? Now you're out there, football's not the king, right? You know, Corvallis, I mean, you got a school, your rival within an hour, Oregon. Football's way bigger yeah. there than it is at Oregon State. So you leave that behind and you had these great relationships. Would you say that you left Ohio State on a good – are you still – lifelong friends with these guys are these still your go-to guys who you text every week is ohio state still near and dear to your heart gary oh yeah yeah um you know i went in before i left for uh oregon actually i think like um a couple of days before I, my flight left i went up there and got a couple of things from my uh my uncle's house where i was staying and uh i was like you know i'm gonna go in and, and see and we'll just watch practice and go say you know say bye to uh jaggers and coach ryan and uh and some of the guys and uh, I walked in there, and, like, Malik comes running up the stairs. He goes, Gary, what's up, man? You know, then everybody, like, oh, Gary's here. Like, so it was uh, – that was really fun going back and seeing him. And then uh, they let me play one more handball game there to, <laughs> to – nice. just Yeah, nice. just to finish out. We ended up, we ended up losing. So I had to give, uh, give my team an earful. I was like, come on, man. You're going to make me go out losing in handball? Come on now. I love but, that. um, yeah, then I said uh, – said by the you know jaggers and ralph and Bo, so yeah that was pretty cool but yeah i'll, I'll always love ohio state and, and the the guys on the team they know uh i'm excited to see them at cliff keen and uh you know watch them watch them throughout the year so well that's, that's that's really good to hear man that you still have a great relationship and you were welcome back with open arms even after you'd left and did yeah because a lot of people that's it man they don't look back that's it they're done yeah they're done they're bitter no, I don't, you know, I've, not, I've never got the bitterness vibe from you at all, man. I never at all. I'm never like, man, Gary, Gary's a bitter guy. Never, ever. No, <laughs> and no one's ever said that. You know what I mean? I, like Josh Sasby. And that's kind of our connection is barbarian. Actually, no, no, yeah. I'm going to put us side by side so that can, people can see. So people can see what, the, what I'm rocking here. And I want to talk about that. <laughs> process, right. So here is gas tank. Gary says it on the back, right? It's got the. Yeah, this gas tank Gary 285 on it, like a route number. It's, it's really, really cool shirt. Yeah. Man. So I got this in the mail. Do you even have one yet? Be honest with me. Yeah, I um, I have one. It got shipped. I was uh, like I said, the flight was kind of last minute, so I actually had it shipped to my house in Corvallis, thinking I would be there. And uh, so it's probably it's probably waiting on my bed for me when I get back. But uh, my dad and stuff got theirs, and uh, Pletcher was rocking his the other day when I went and saw him. I so, love it. I love everything yeah. <laughs> about it. Pletcher's already got one. I love it. That's so yeah. awesome, man. So. Uh, hey, Pl does Pletcher still date Hannah? Yeah. I'm going to tell you this right now. Probably the best person I've ever worked with in media, and that's Mark Bader, Joe Williamson, Martin Floriani, <laughs> all these people that I've worked with. Uh, that guy, or she is, Hannah Mears is like the standard in media. She's incredible, by the way. She's unbelievable. She's probably one of the best uh, media people I've ever worked with. And that's why the Steelers picked her up because yeah. she's the real Donna and she's with the Penguins too. So her, uh, her media skills do not translate to Monopoly, I will say. I had she's to, not uh, good at Monopoly, huh? Not good at Monopoly. Hannah's, Hannah, Hannah Mears is lousy at Monopoly. That's good to hear. They don't, but, they don't know the art of the trade, art of the deal. I had gotcha. I ha I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't seen anything she's not good at yet as far as <laughs> editing videos. She has an eye for wrestling. It's incredible. I wanted her to announce some matches, but she's got such a good eye, and I don't think she wanted to. She didn't. I don't think she wants to commentate. I think yeah. she could kill it in commentary on the mic. I mean, her interviews are incredible. She's super knowledgeable. She has an eye for the sport. Um, yeah. She understands what she's seeing. And yeah, Hannah Mears is the standard in wrestling media for me, at least. I mean, she's, she's incredible, man. I've hired her and worked with her for a couple things and 
and she's she's the real deal. And so you got to hang out with her and find out yeah. Hannah Mears is lousy at Monopoly. I love to hear. Yeah. I love hearing <laughs> it because she's good at everything else, man. Yeah, <laughs> super talented person and, and highly intelligent, um, awesome person to work with. But you're out in Corvallis, right? Have they seen? As have these besides at your apartment? Have these arrived anywhere? Uh. I'm not sure. I've had a couple people ask me to um to bring them out. Some they said they'd Venmo me if I go pick them up. So uh, I might be bringing a couple back on the flight. That's why I brought an empty suitcase. So hopefully I'll be bringing out a bunch to to Corvallis. So nice. So, I think once the season gets started too, it'll it'll ramp up. Cause, oh, um, it's gonna ramp up, dude. I'm telling yeah, you right now. Real. You got some good heavyweights in your conference, though. You got some real good yeah. heavyweights in the conference. So you're gonna have to deal with some really good heavyweights. Right. I mean, so that's good that, you know, I know you want to challenge though, you know, you're going to, you're going to yeah. have price. I, I mean, I'm counting right now if, if we're including you at least three guys out of the, out of the pack are, are going to be all AQs, you know, depending on the season goes, but you got a really tough conference, right? You got, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm used to it. I'm used to I know you're in the big 10, you were sixth in the big yeah. 10 and yeah, that was the standard. Hey, did you take Gable down? I forget. Did you take Stevenson down? I forget. I don't. I. I don't think I did. <laughs> I want to. He put it on you pretty I, good, didn't he? He did. Yeah. He he put it on me a little bit. Yeah. So. Gary, that was a tough one for me. Gary, you know who else he put it on? The defending <laughs> Olympic champ Taha <laughs> Goal of Turkey. Yeah. <laughs> See that? Yeah, that was that was wild, man. He was he's on a different level. It wasn't close. I'm yeah, not talking was, about the gold medal match. That was Pritchard Vili of yeah. Georgia. I'm talking about his his quarterfinal, the defending Olympic champion, Taha Gould, lost him eight, and he blew his doors off. It wasn't close. Yeah. Man. Yeah. That guy's a special – he's a special talent. I don't know if he's coming back or not, but obviously it doesn't matter to you. You you, you got you got a lot of people you got to go through anyway before you got to worry about Gable Stevenson, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Talk about Barbarian Center. Are you going to go over there with the, the suitcase and try and get the uh, gas tank Gary shirts hooked up? What, what are we doing there? Talk to me. Yeah, I've, I've been trying to make it um, back over. I've been, I've been running around. You know, like I said, my dad had back surgery, so he's been having me do a bunch of errands for him and uh, going out to pit. So these next couple of days, I was going to try to go in and get like a get a practice or something and, uh, and maybe snag some T-shirts if he's got them in there for sure. Nice. Yeah, I got mine. Oh, hold on, hold on. So there's a couple things I got to talk to you about here. This is a shameful <laughs> thing I'm about to do and show you. There we go. Okay. There we go. So I'm I'm done with the when this when this is no longer the name of the team. I'm done. I've I've moved the forward. Guardians, not right. <laughs> whatever. Don't care. Call them whatever. You, actually, we don't even know if that's what they're going to be called because now they're in like litigation. With, oh, a, really? with a roller derby team that is already the Cleveland Guardians, if you didn't know. Oh, I did not know that. What I thought it was already official. Yeah, the old man Dolan lives lives down – he lives just off my road. I live by the by the owner, doesn't live too far down oh, the road really? from me. He lives in the same township as me. And I, I found the neighborhood. I don't know the exact – how. well, I did I did <laughs> house. But um, – I had to one day I drove by and just rolled the windows down and I was like, sell the team. Oh gosh. Sell the team. <laughs> I mean, he's not out there like, <laughs> gardening or anything to know. So yeah, and he lives, he lives in Auburn township um, right over here in Jugga County. So, um, and they're from Chardon, which I live actually in between where he's from and where he lives. Now. Oh, okay. So, yeah. And they're, they're lawyers. They're not like, like a lot of these, like, uh, What's his name? Dan Gilbert, who owns the Cavs, is like he owns Rocket Mortgage, right? And Quicken Loans. So these guys are lawyers. They're not like they own the Indians, but they're not they're they're lawyers. They practice law. Yeah. So it's kind of an odd, they're odd owners to begin with, and they're super cheap. So but Josh, we went to a a minor league baseball game where they let the pitchers bat. <laughs> Anyhow, we went and it was packed. That first off, that's a great stadium. The Great American oh, Ballpark. Hey. If you can catch a game while you're home, go do it. If they're home, yeah, do it. Excellent field. They're in the hunt for a wild card. They got some players. They got Bado. Uh, he was on a roll lately. He's cooled off. He was on a roll for a little bit there. 
Castellano, that's another one I think is good. He's like their uh, right fielder. He, I, I was impressed with him. Dude's massive. Yeah. Uh, it, they're, they're, they got a good team. They're fun to watch. And, uh, yeah, I got into it. I, I was like, it was sweet to watch. And then um, there was a really awful 80s hip-hop concert, Vanilla Ice Headlined, <laughs> afterwards. And it was super hot and, like, really, really disgustingly humid, which you guys don't have out in Corvallis. There's no, have, you yeah. noticed that? have you noticed that? Yeah. No humidity. I said, it's supposed, I said it's supposed to start raining here soon, so I'm nervous. I'm like, I can't be riding my bike in the rain now. Well, it's weird though. It's not the same. It's not like uh, the storms here. They're not. It's like a like a like this drizzle almost, or like okay. a real light rain, and it's all winter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, like because I've been out there in a couple winter, uh, a couple different winters where I covered things. Um, almost uh, died on Christmas Eve, 2014, rafting with my uh, maniac best friend who lives in Sandy, Oregon now, John Watkins. And it was just like this real weird cloudy order overcast. Yeah. And it, it wasn't like this hard rain. What I observed was never really a hard rain, I guess. Okay. So where you get a raincoat and a flood. Yeah, that makes you feel a little, a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah, it's not ter- – it's not – but it, but it's all winter and it's relentless. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, but and they, and they rare, when they get snow out there, Gary, it's like zombie apocalypse. Everything <laughs> shuts down. Or if they even get a threat of snow or ice – it just shuts down. <laughs> so it's crazy. It's wild. But hey, can you share the story? I believe it was you that had the guy walk off the mat against you. When did oh, the guy yeah. walk off the mat? What paint that story for me? Because I, I, you told me that when someone recently told me that one, and I'm like, yeah, this dude does have a gas tank. What is yeah, the story? And what's the setting for that story? Go ahead. Yeah, we were. Um, it was actually a kid who had beaten me. Like it was. One- my sophomore year, this kid had beat me like probably four times in the past throughout throughout that year and the year before. So I was called in my rival, but you know, he was always beating me. So uh we were wrestling at the uh sectional semifinals and he's actually a really good friend of mine now. Uh ended up going to Army, but we were wrestling and like West Point guy? And I was like like what Army happened? West Point guy? Uh, yeah, I think he played football there. Wow. Okay, go yeah. ahead. Tell the story. So this guy had your yeah. number. Yeah, yeah. He, he was beating me up for, for a long time. But uh, I started, like, I don't know. I was just trying to, you know, I wasn't the biggest shooter. I'm still not the biggest shooter. But uh, I was taking some shots, and, um, you know, he, I could kind of see that he was getting tired. He was backing up, backing out of bounds. So they, they hit him for stalling a couple times. And um, – they hit him for stalling a weird stalling call towards the end and ended up like uh, putting me up by two or something, I think. And there's like 30 seconds left. And I, and like, just as soon as they hit me with stalling, he goes, I'm done. I'm done. He starts walking off the mat to his coaches. And, you know, obviously like his coaches are freaking out, like finish the match, like get back on the mat. And so um, there's probably like 10 seconds left actually. Yeah. So they're like, finish the match. And uh, he gets back to the line and he just, as soon as they blew the whistle, he starts – I have a video of it. It's so funny. But he starts walking off the mat. And so I look back at my dad like this, and he, he's just like, go. And so I ran up behind him, picked him up, and, and Matt returned him for, the, for another takedown. So it was uh, – he's like, now you just do that every match. He's like, just make the guy feel like that to where he wants to walk off every single match. So it, it was pretty funny. For, did you get a repeat performance of it? Didn't it happen again at the state tournament too? Um, I don't think so. No, I don't think it. No, no, that was the only time I think. That's the only time someone just quit. Yeah, I was try. I tried. I've been trying to make it happen ever since. Oh, we got to see that replicated. I know. We got to see it replicated. I love <laughs> it, dude. That's awesome. Yeah, that's it was wild when that yeah, happened. Yeah, it was crazy. I I never expected, it, especially because you know, like this kid had had beaten me up before, so. I was ready for him to fight that last, you know, 10, 15 seconds, and then he just walked off. What but, do you think the biggest thing this year is to, to bring a pack title home to Corvallis, Oregon, as a team? You know, you got a new coaching staff who's, you know, only been there for a, a year, right? Yeah. They're going into year two. Being a leader, you know, you're only going to be there for a year. You know, it's going to be a short stay, but what, how can you make the biggest impact? First off, do you want to go overtime a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I already know the answer, but 
Gas tank yeah. Gary's always <laughs> going to want to go overtime. But, okay. Always overtime. Okay. What are you going to have to do to make a meaningful impact for you guys to make a run at, at Arizona State and, and Stanford and, and win a pack title? You know, Cal Poly's is surging. Yeah. Bakersfield's always tough. What do you guys got to do? And, and what does Gary Traub got to do to help try and lead the Beavers to a pack title? Yeah, I think uh, I think we're already on on the path. You know, just um, working out this summer. Coach, you know, Pendleton's been putting us through, and you know, Ingo's been, you know, making it making us work hard. And, and uh, a lot of times, some of the young guys they uh, they don't see the point until you know. That, I feel like that's why I'm there, help them see this stuff right now. Everyone in the country's doing it, and uh, you got to take advantage of, of these early workouts, especially before school starts, because uh, that's the easiest time to do extras is when you're in the summer or when you're uh, preseason. That's the easiest time to do extra. When you, once you get during the season, you have school, everything's going on. Um, you know, you're trying to cut weight or do whatever. That that's when it gets hard to do extra, and that's you know that's another time to step up and when you have to. But uh, yeah, this is the easiest time of the year to, to do extra workouts. So while I'm home, I'm, I'm making it a point to. Um, show these guys that I'm, I'm still working and, you know, encourage them to do the same thing while we have this little break. And um, yeah, but I, I think in order to win a Pac-12 title, we, we, we have the team to do it. You know, we got a, a lot of good transfers coming in. We got Crooks from Arizona state, uh, Tanner Harvey, you know, we have um, Trey Munoz just got there and a lot of guys are, are coming in that are, that are going to be really good. So just, uh, I think for me, just pushing these these heavyweights that are in there. You know, we have some good young guys that just came in, and then uh, obviously some of the heavyweights that were already there, and uh, just pushing them to get better during this preseason, so that when when the season hits, you know, they're giving, they're pushing me, so pushing them to push me basically. But yeah, I'm really excited about this year, and and uh, I really think we we're going to win a Pac-12 title. I think we have the team to do it. I love the supreme confidence, and I and I know yeah. it's not going to be lack for work of working for you, man. I, I, yeah. You're not afraid of hard work. Uh, when you get over to Josh today, did, does he just have one style of shirt, or do you have? No, two? I think he has the two. Yeah, he has the that one, one with then, like uh, the yeah. your name real big across across the back, and it's got a gas tank. Yeah, uh, like the gas tank. A yeah, that one's kind of sweet. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite? Are you into this guy? Are you this guy? Or you yeah, know, I, I like gas tank. I like that. I think I like the gas tank more just because you know I don't people see and uh, you know I'm walking around with my face on my t-shirt. People are probably like, "Oh, look at this guy," you know. But yeah, well, I, like I don't the, think uh, you're that guy, Gary. I'm not, I'm just gonna put it out <laughs> there so so it can be known through yeah. <laughs> through the internet. Gary Trav is not the guy who's out there to wear the shirt of himself with his own picture on it. You're not that guy. <laughs> but we're in this wild time, like I said, with this name image like this. I mean you're not going to make a million dollars off of it. I mean, if we're looking at in the sport of NCAA wrestling division one, RBY, right. And we've got uh, Spencer Lee, right. And we've got Gable. Those are the yeah. three that like move the needle for most people. As far as you can, there as marketing, Yanni can probably make money. Diaka Mahalas. Yeah. But I don't think this is going to be like, I, I, I think the quarterback at Alabama and the quarterback at Ohio state are going to yeah. make money off of it. But I just yeah. don't know if the wrestling community gets – it's hard for you guys to – and there's a lot of rules. There's a lot of yeah. rules. Didn't you say you had a lot of – I can tell you my nephew is on the App State team where my nephew Ian yeah. – my other nephew is the 197. And he's like, we've got these – there's all these meetings about this. He's like, I don't want to make anybody yeah. with my name. He said there's a lot of rules. Do you guys have a lot of rules too? Like, Because it's state to state, the rules, I believe. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we have a definitely a lot of rules, and like that was kind of like it kind of hit me out of nowhere because you know like when I first, you know, I was kind of out of the Ohio State loop, and I wasn't really in any other loop. So I was like, when it came out with the Instagram post, like the NCAA posted, like, hey, you can now make money off your name, image, likeness. I was like, well, I didn't even see this coming. So I was a little bit behind behind the eight ball. So then uh, once I got into or like. Oregon State started sending me a bunch of, like, emails and stuff about it. So I was, like, reading up on it and, and you know, watching all the videos and, and kind of learning what to do. But, yeah, we have uh, – a. they made it a little bit easier just because you do it through an app. So, like, the Open Doors app, you just go through and, and you, they have, like, a list of prompts and it kind of walks you through the whole process of 
disclosing an NIL and, and all that stuff. So they, it, it, they made it pretty easy with that, with that whole process. Is there anybody I missed who's probably marketable? I mean, like I said, the Big Ten – and, and with your work ethic and, and it's you, it's not like this is a made up thing. You are the guy, you're the blue collar guy. And that's what people love about it. Right. You're this blue collar average everyday Joe. And a lot of people's opinions who's out here making noise and is a top 20 heavyweight and is a walk on at Ohio state. Now he transfers out to Oregon state. Now we're interested. Now you have our attention, yeah. right? Is there yeah. anybody else besides Gable Spencer and you know, RBY who, who you think could, make some money off of it and make some noise off of it. Is there anybody else you can think of? I mean, I think, uh, you know, Mason Paris uh, and, you know, some of the Michigan guys, you know, like I bought a Jack Medley t-shirt the other day, you know, because. Uh, really? You bought it? Where'd yeah. you get that? Um, Constant pressure. They had, they came out with a shirt, but like, yeah. Every why time why see, Jack Medley? Talk to me about that. Why Jack Medley? Are you guys, boy, like what's the connection there? Or do you just want to support them? Yeah. I, I mean, uh, I would say, yeah, I went up to Ann Arbor, my buddy, because uh, to see Joey Silva. And we ended up getting to hang out with, you know, like I knew Paris from high school, just wrestling around with him, a bunch of Spatolas and stuff like that. But uh, we went up there and, like, we're staying with Jack and, you know, just had, like, a really fun time and stuff like that. I got to know him a little bit more. And, I mean, the kid is just – he's a grinder. Like, he's running uh, – we're sleeping in, and he woke up and run, like, four miles. So, you know, he's always – he's the – like the kind of the same hardworking, hardworking guy. And I was like, you know, this guy's waking up at six in the morning to go do runs. Like, I feel like, I feel lazy. I was like, dude, I'm just here for vacation. This guy's up, you know, running. But uh, yeah, kind of all the, all the shirts that are out there, I'm trying to, you know, get a little bit and just support everybody, you know? I love it. I love, yeah. I love that you're doing that, man. I, the, you know, the ones that I've been looking at uh, that really caught me was David Carr has a couple different ones. Oh, really? Yeah. There's a couple different ones that a couple different people have gone through. I know that Spencer Lee got picked up by Rudis, right? Yeah. Um, so it's crazy. And it, it's real. I mean, I'm very curious who Gabe was going to pick Gable up, right? Yeah. That, that, that's one that makes me curious. I know that's the enemy and that's the hurdle. That's the biggest hurdle you got to get over. <laughs> yeah. You're not worried about that. You're worried about the yeah. guy. So you're not worried about what, what business movies making, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, first off, did you love the Olympic gold medal match? At least, could you at least be a fan of them for a little bit? Yeah, yeah. I, I uh, I put everything aside and was rooting for. Uh, well, I was rooting for him in the gold medal match for sure. I mean, crazy. just and uh, crazy, crazy. Like, dude. Yeah. First off, you know that ref messed that up, right? Yeah, yeah. You're never supposed to bring You're them. Not up. Supposed to you're supposed to make him work. He's supposed yeah, to make him work. I can't believe you didn't give him, you know, that like arrogant, that like, yeah, you know, that action, action thing they do. Yeah. Like, come on, hey, you know, let's go. Keep pro- moving, right? Props to, props to Gable for getting up and, uh, and you know, making no, the rest, no, making a no, decision listen, there. Yeah. yeah. Hey, 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 yeah. oh, I tip my cap to him. It was super <laughs> duper aware of him to do that. But normally, yeah. you know, 99 out of 100 times, we never get that call. They never yeah. do. Oh, no. Yeah. You, yeah Normally like you said, they do doing, the old, let's go. Yes. Or like push you back oh, down. It's wild. But it did yeah. feel good to be an American. And, you know, and another yeah. thing is a guy you probably grew up watching and idolizing as a little kid, David Taylor. Yeah. Right? Or as a middle schooler. When did you graduate? 15 or 14 from high school? 16. 16. Sorry. Sorry. It goes yeah. quick. It goes quick, Gary. <laughs> I can't keep track. Yeah. But, you know, you were a kid and he's winning four Ohio State titles and you were probably just just into wrestling then right yeah yeah so you remember that and you're from the same area from southwest southwest ohio yeah. right crazy stuff gary i love it uh so you're going over to barbarian you're gonna hook up with josh you're gonna take a suitcase suitcase back of these to corvallis that's right hook the team up yeah i mean i don't know if that's the thing the name of the game they can, they can pay at this point right they can pay. yeah yeah that's right, right yeah. come on they're, 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 trust me they're all they're all sending me venmos whoever whoever needs one i'm i'm, I'm just I the love it. Picking them up for them. Right now, how many pre-orders do you have to take back? Four? Uh, I got a, maybe like six or seven to take back, so I got a couple, yeah. I like it. Just, I like yeah. it. We'll try and get this out quicker. We'll try yeah. and get the, 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 the skins, the all the stuff, the graphics here, so we can get this out. So yeah. when do you take off? Uh, I'm leaving Tuesday. Oh, 
We should have this published yeah. by then. People can see it. Can yeah, there you go. Plenty of time. Yeah, yeah, plenty of time. And then, you know, you can get some last second ones too. So, all right. Yeah. We're out of overtime. Do you have anything else for me? Gas tag Gary Trump. Just go Beavs, baby. Go Beavs, baby. Is there anything go out Beavs. there that you've heard about doing that you haven't done yet as far as the outdoor stuff? Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm waiting for the, uh, for the salmon to start running. Okay, so you want the salmon run? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> once I want again, the salmon. That, that's... Okay, so the salmon run. So once again, if yeah. you want the near-death experience with the rafting, I got your guy. <laughs> John Watkins is your oh, yeah. guy. Listen, I got to be honest. I had a conversation with my best friend the other day, and he, he moved on to – I can't remember what the name of the river is. I, I could Google it real quick and find it out. But I just got to be honest with you because you might run into this guy because they're all crazy out there. Yeah. You'll find that out. But he's like, oh, yeah, I live on the river. There's a bunch of class fours. It will be fun. We should come out this spring and do it. And then the spring is when, it, um, when a lot of the things are running high because it's been raining yeah. all winter and then there's a thaw. So he, he was like, Hey, you should come on run with me. And I go, Hey, no offense, but you're a liar. <laughs> I go, you're a liar. <laughs> Gary, it would be this is what it would be like. It would be like me bringing this guy into Oregon state's practice. I could survive and you guys couldn't murder me. <laughs> I know how to wrestle. I wouldn't want to go wrestle in a D one practice. Let's just get that straight. <laughs> but I could survive and not get murdered. At least it would be yeah, like, if yeah. I brought this layman in and just let you kill him. Yeah. Guy who never <laughs> yeah. wrestled and just let him kill him. He assumes since that he's good at the rafting that I should be good at the rafting. Yeah, that everybody yeah, she should be. <laughs> it's not how this works, dude. It's yeah. Not. Yeah, I'll send you this clip. I gotta send you this clip. I got your number. I'll uh send you that. I don't know if I did yet. Did I send that to you yet? Where he almost where he almost died? Where I almost died? I, to send I don't it. think so. Yeah, it's horrible. It's pretty terrible. <laughs> we did a class four, class five rapid in uh uh, Battleground, Washington. Uh, we did one on the Deschutes River. I've run the Deschutes River with him. I run the North Umqua with him. Clackamas. And uh, we did another one. Oh, we did the White Salmon. The White Salmon goes out into the uh, Columbia River Gorge. It's something else. It's, it's, okay. it's, yeah, if you, like, if you, if you want a real, if you want to get it. into it, Gary, if you want to get a real adrenaline rush of near drowning, I'll set you up with yeah. that. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> no, 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 I wouldn't do that to you. I don't hate you. I don't hate anyone enough to set him up with this guy. Oh, he's a maniac. Okay. Gary, thank you. The salmon will be running. Spring will be here before you know it. Hopefully yeah. we've got an all American finish for gas tank. Gary Traub of Cincinnati, Ohio. Oh, who'd you wrestle in the state finals? Darmstadt. You wrestle Darmstadt? Yeah. Did you get assassined? At the end, he got me. Gotcha. Was that 182 yeah. or 195? 95. So you were 95 the same year as him and Colin Moore? No, I was 16. Wait. Colin was... Uh, 15. Yeah, I think so. 15, yeah, because that was the only person who beat... Colin beat Darmstadt. I think in like the Bill D's tournament or something up in Akron. Yeah. Yeah. So, wow, you were a really good weight. Who'd you beat in the semis? Uh, Naples. I think you're wrestling at OU now. Aaron Naples. Aaron Naples. Yeah, okay. Was he from Aurora? Where's that guy from? Oh, dang, I don't know. It's D1, though. Yeah. D1, Aurora's D2, so that's wrong. That's clearly wrong. <clears throat> clearly very wrong on my part. All right. Uh, so we got www.barbarianapparel.com, gas tank carries, shirts. Check them out. Get them. They're Thank available. You. They're out there. There's two different types. This is the best type. Okay, <laughs> black. They're black, so it's slimming on me. I'm happy with yeah. that. I'll take it. <laughs> Gary, thank you for the time. Stick around, all right? Yeah, thanks for having me.